Uh, Russia is flexing its military muscle during its Victory Day parade. The annual parade marks the defeat of the Nazis in World War II. Vladimir Putin used the event to justify his brutal invasion of Ukraine, describing it as, quote, the inevitable, timely, and only correct decision. Deborah Pata begins our coverage from Ukraine. Marching in Moscow's Red Square, a show of Putin's power. Today, he said, you are defending what your grandfathers fought for. He used the day to blame NATO expansion for his war and bolster the lie he is denazifying Ukraine. The danger grew every day, he said. Russia made a preemptive move against aggression. In Russia, losses are touted as victories, allegations of atrocities dismissed as a hoax. Kremlin-controlled media targeting even the very young. But in Ukraine, Putin's war is seen as a series of brutal attacks and strategic blunders. Russian troops stand accused of nearly 10,000 war crimes. And Volodymyr Zelensky put a new spin on that old idiom, raining on your parade. Very soon there will be two victory days in Ukraine, he said, and someone won't have any. We won then, we will win now. Ukraine's resistance is the inspiring story of this awful war. Returning to Kyiv, acting U.S. Ambassador Kristina Kavin summed it up succinctly. Who across the entire country, including those in the east of Ukraine, refused to bend to his will and told the Russians, go F yourself. Russia may have put on an impeccable parade, but that military precision has not been mirrored on the battlefield. There's a very muted commemoration of Victory Day here in Ukraine. Understandably, people are consumed with the war they are fighting right here, right now. Vlad and Marie? All right, Deborah, thank you very much. So for more on all of this, we want to bring in CBS News reporter Mary Lushina. She is in Riga, Latvia. Uh, Mary, thanks for joining us again this morning. You know, foreign officials had said that Vladimir Putin could use this speech to maybe launch a full mobilization of Russian troops, you know, formally declare war in Ukraine. Do we hear any large policy announcements during the speech? No, Putin today was very sort of uh, scaled back and timid in his speech. He did not uh, project any concrete plans for what the Russian army plans to do in Ukraine. Um, and what's, I think, the most important, he did not say... Uh, he did not claim any victories. He did not claim any successes, uh, which was surprising to a lot of um, experts who thought that the 9th of May, the victory day, which was sort of uniting in terms of how to put and justify this invasion, would be a perfect opportunity for him to say, for example, that Mariupol was taken or that, you know, uh, to celebrate uh, the sort of swaths of land that the Russian army has recently gained. But he did not do that. Uh, he did not say anything of, anything of the sort. He acknowledged that Russian army is... Uh, experiencing and suffering casualties, and the only sort of measure that he announced would be supporting financially the children and families of Russian soldiers who died or uh, were severely wounded in this operation. Um, so, it, you know, the speech surprised a lot of people, but for slightly different reasons. According to Reuters, uh, Russian chief negotiator Vladimir Medinsky said today that peace talks with Ukraine had not stopped. Have there been any signs of progress? Yes, Medinsky said that, you know, they've been talking sort of online, virtually, but for a one-on-one -on -one sort of in-person meeting with the Ukrainian delegation, uh, there they needs to be more specific details and more concrete information, which is quite strange because Zelensky a few days ago gave very, very concrete details about what Ukraine wants from Russia to join negotiations. And they said that they want pre-invasion uh, borders and they want uh, the return of um, people who had to flee Russia, who were taken from Russia, uh, and a lot of claims that essentially contradict the Russian military goals in this operation. So it seems that there is not much progress and the talks have stalled. You know, the, Medinsky himself has faced a lot of criticism from even Russian officials, from people like the head of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, uh, for not being tough enough on Ukrainian delegation. So, uh, you know, it seems like both sides have so far are not willing to meet again and they don't have much to talk about. All right, Mary, thank you very much.